Too often we look at the life of Joseph Smith and somewhat ignore the life of Emma Smith. The Lord called Emma Smith an elect lady. Without question, she was chosen before she was born to fulfill a mission which she had to stand at Joseph's side. And here we are in the bedroom of Joseph and Emma here in Kirtland, Ohio, in the Whitney store, where this story can be told because of the sacrifices she made during her life. I'd like to take just approximately one year out of Emma's life to give us a, a feel for what Emma endured as the wife of the prophet. In September of 1831, Joseph and Emma were living on the Morley farm. The Lord asked the Joseph Smith and the church to sell the Morley farm. And so they were in a comfortable home but here they were uprooted and moved out of their own home into somebody else's home, that of John and Elsa Johnson in Hiram. They tried to make them comfortable, but they were still living with another family, which had to be somewhat awkward. Then Emma becomes pregnant with uh, Joseph III, who will be their first living son. At the third month of pregnancy, out in the Johnson home, the mobs around Hiram took Joseph out and tarred and feathered him. They pulled him out of the bedroom, similar to this. Uh, he was on a trundle bed. They carried him out and told Emma that she probably would never see him again. At least that's how she felt. And so she screamed, murder. And so that woke everybody out. Up. They took Joseph out. It was so bad that he had a near-death experience where his spirit left his body and he looked down at his lifeless body. Within a week then, she had lost one of her twins that she had adopted, the boy Murdoch twin. And so she almost loses Joseph she does lose the Murdoch boy. And then Joseph is told by the Lord he needs to go to Missouri. He's delayed a trip. Within two days of losing the Murdoch boy, then Joseph leaves to go to Missouri. She's all alone. Mobs have been around the house. That had to be a frightening experience for her. She later told one of her grandchildren that this was the only mob that really uh, she ever talked about because of how intimidating it was and how fearful it was for her. Joseph uh, gets to Youngstown with Sidney Rigdon and he meets Newell K. Whitney who tells Joseph he really should ask Emma to go to Kirtland and have her leave these dangerous surroundings in Hiram. And so he says, go and live with my wife in, in our home. Emma then pick, packs up, moves to Kirtland, and knocks on the door of the Whitney home. Uh, that had to be a very frightful experience. Here you knock on somebody's door and say, your husband said I can live with you for three months. What a frustrating experience that would have been. Uh, but to make matters worse, then uh, Sister Whitney has an aunt who's living there who does not want Emma in the home and forces Sister Whitney to make a decision. Uh, and she said, either I go or Emma goes within two hours of being there. She's told by Sister Whitney that she was sorry, but she'd have to leave. She lives with two other families while 
Joseph is on that trip. Just think of Emma having gone through that tar feathering of Joseph experience, being pregnant. The logical thing for any woman would be to go home and live with her mother and her father. She'd be better cared for. It was near Pennsylvania where the tar and feathering occurred. Uh, any church member would have glad, be gladly taken her to the home, but she refused because if she went home, she would be essentially renouncing the work. Those were the conditions she would have had to live under. So she chose not to go home, but to go through this experience here. Joseph returns to Kirtland after the trip, and we know that she was not very happy about it because we have Joseph record a very cryptic note. And in that note, he said that I found Emma rather disconsolate upon my return. Now, any husband knows what that word rather disconsolate means. <laughs> but here they're reunited, and so they go back out to Hiram to live. But now during that pregnancy, Joseph will have taken three trips away from home and leaving Emma with others to take care of. The birth of Joseph III now is going to take place in this very bedroom in November of 1832. Joseph is on a trip with Noel K. Whitney and Sidney Rigdon, and he writes a wonderful letter back to Emma from New York, and he tells her that he wants her to understand that God is your friend in heaven. And then he said, and I am your friend and husband here on earth. And he assured her of the love of the Savior and his love for her. And he said, I know your circumstances. I know that others do not, but try to take consolation in knowing that God is your friend. What a wonderful letter. But here she is, alone. I'm certain from what research I've done that Joseph had to have said, don't worry, Emma, you've lost three children in childbirth, and I'll be back when Joseph III now is going to be born. He must have assured her that. Well, the good news was that he was back on the day of the birth. However, the less fortunate news was that he was late. He came hours after the birth, and she had to go through that birth all alone. Well, she was an elect lady. She had as much faith as Joseph had. She stood at his side. She went through trials that no woman would want to go through because of her love for Joseph and her divine mission, which most certainly was given to her before she was born. I love Emma Smith. I admire her for the trials and struggles that we, she went through. And we've only talked about one year in her life but she certainly was an elect lady and called of God just as much as was Joseph.